There are many things in Python that are overlooked and you know not used enough and not given enough love. And the collections module is probably right up there with the most useful things that are the most ignored. And it's it's weird because it has so much good stuff and I'm going to be showing you three things you can do with it today. Um, but it's it's so very useful and it's almost like no one has even heard of it with the amount you see it around. You just don't ever see it. And I'm here to change that. So we're going to create a file and we're going to call this uh, named tuple. So I'm going to be showing you how to use a named tuple, a deck, and a default dict. These are the three that I just find most useful. I think there are five or six more things you can uh, do with it. But uh, I'm just going to show you these uh, three things. So as to not spend all of your time, you can do your own research into other stuff if you want to. Uh, so we're going to be doing a named tuple in this file. So this is sort of a read-only object. It works like a tuple and an object at the same time. Uh, you know, attributes can't be changed once they are set. So it's good for that sort of thing. So if we were to have, for example, a, a full name class, and then we give it a named tuple, and then you have to give it a type name. I always recommend just you know setting it to the same as the variable name you set for it. And then in brackets, or it can be in a string, but I prefer to do this. You can have first, middle, and last. And these will be the tuple elements. So the tuple will be comprised of three elements, and you'll be able to use uh, dot accessing uh, to be able, uh, like you would an object, to be able to access these things individually. So if I were to do my name equals full name, and as we all I did this last take as well, as we all know, uh, my name isn't in fact Ethan, it's Barney the dinosaur. <laughs> uh, we can do print my name index like that, and we can also do print my name dot first, and it will do uh, exactly the same thing. So as you can see, we've accessed it by index, and we've also accessed it by dot accessing, and it's done exactly the same thing. And you'll note that if we try and change anything, uh, so if I wanted to say it to I don't know, Garfield, because Garfield isn't a dinosaur, it won't let you do it. And that's the exact reason it won't, specifically because Garfield isn't a dinosaur. Uh, it also, <laughs> well, I've lost my mind already, I've only just started recording. If we try and do it uh, using dot accessing as well, it will do exactly the same thing. Well, actually, we need to show that off, we need to comment this out. But it will do exactly the same thing. It says it can't set the attribute. Um, and also above it says, full name object does not support item assignment. It's actually a different type of error. That's weird. I actually didn't know that. Um, but yeah, essentially, it is a read-only class slash read-only object. It's very useful for certain things, especially if you if um, you got maybe like an API call and there's a lot of data and you don't necessarily want to make a full class because you think it's a bit of a waste of time, you could just use it as a full tuple and just iterate through things like that and it, it, it's really nice for that sort of thing. Arguably even more useful are decks, uh, spelt weirdly. So we do from collections import deck. And these are essentially lists that have fixed maximum lengths. Well, you, I, I think it's optional actually to set a maximum length, but you can also insert and pop things from the left as quickly as you can from the right. It is essentially a double-sided limited list of things. And it's just, it's really an extension of lists in that respect. So you can have a deck of numbers. So you do need to pass it an empty list to initialize it. Uh, or you can actually pass a, a list that has things in it if you want to. And we're going to set the max length to equal 5. So that means the deck can be no longer than 5 elements. Once, uh, uh, If you append an item to the end of the list, the first item will automatically be popped out of it. So it's not like it won't accept any more arguments. It will just you know, get rid of the, the first argument. It will be first in, last... First in, first out. That's the one it is. It's a first in, first out. There are other things around if you want Philo, uh, first in, last out. You can do 4i in range 10. I might cover those in a future video. Uh, we can do numbers.append i. And then we can print the numbers. 
And then if we do this, I'm starting to regret doing this naming scheme. But you can see it's appending uh, things as it goes, do, 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 until it gets to here, and then it realizes, oh, I've already got five elements. I will pop the zero, so you can see the zero is now gone and the one has moved over here, and the five has been added. And it essentially just kind of cycles through like this, and it keeps to five, but it keeps appending things at the end. Um, so that's one really good use for it. Another really good use for it is the whole append left and pop left things I was talking about before. So we could, if we wanted to, put um, the number four back on the left. And then we can print numbers. As you can see, the number four is back on the left and the nine has been popped off the right. Because you're appending for the left, things get popped off the right when the maximum length has been reached. We can also do uh, pop left and then print n, and that will now print 4, because 4 was the leftmost element. So we're now popping from the left, which is something you can't normally do in a list. If you wanted to, you know, appending is just append, uh, popping is just pop, exactly the same. It is an extension of lists in that respect. It works exactly the same with indexing and everything. Uh, it's just, it provides more options. It essentially means you don't have to have some constant with if statements to determine maximum lengths of things. The final thing that I want to show you today is default dicks uh, that are, I would argue, about as useful as dicks. It's, it sort of depends exactly what you're going for. If I can find my notes, there we go. So from collections, import default dict. And then we can set uh, a collection of items as a default dict. And then in here, we have to pass a, well, apparently we don't have to, but we can pass a, a factory method in here. So I'm going to pass a list. So this items is now a default dict where the, the starting element or the default element is an empty list. So what it does, uh, normally if you were to try to update a variable in, or sorry, update a value of a key in the dictionary that doesn't exist, it will, you know, an error and it will, it will complain. However, with, with this, if you try and uh, update an element, then it will automatically create an element for you using this default. So in this case, it could be a list. If you wanted it to default to an int, you can do it as an int. It does have to be a method, and this does mean you can put, you know, lambdas in here. So you can say, uh, well, we'll talk about the other, I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll leave it as a list for now. I will do items and then yeah, we will just have my items, for example, and say that I acquired, I don't know, views <laughs> as an item. Um, I, I don't know. And then if you print items, now you notice that we never actually set uh, Ethan to be a key of the dictionary. Never tell Python at any point to do it. And we also never tell Python to set it as a list. However, uh, because we set it as a default dict, it knows. So you can see we have my name, and then we have our list of views. And if we were to have, say, an int, uh, and then we do plus equals one, for example, we now have one. And the thing we land, as I was saying before, we'll just use a, a number again. So lambdas, I'll do a separate video on lambdas. There's no point in talking about them now, but they're essentially anonymous functions. So you can set, in this case, lambda seven, and now the default will be seven. And because we've added one, it's eight. So this function is basically, you know, returning seven. It's sort of like doing um, uh, def factory uh, return seven, essentially, and then putting that in here. It's the same thing as doing that. It's just a bit nicer to do with lambdas because it makes a bit more sense. But you can pass any function you want in there. It can be as complicated as you like. It can have all sorts of validations and everything. You wouldn't necessarily need it if you're just doing a default value, but you could do whatever you want. You could literally have a dictionary where the value just assigns itself at random, just complete randomness in there, which I think is quite fun. Obviously, it's not too practical, but you know, the point stands that you can pass in any method in there 
and it will do it for you. So that is a general rundown of the things that I find most useful in the collections module. If you like the video, then make sure to like it to let me know and leave a comment if you have any questions or any feedback or anything, because it really helps out. If you liked the video, consider subscribing. If you really liked it, consider either becoming a patron, link down below, or a member using the join button. That's all new and everything. Uh, you can you know, join either tier, one pound a month. If you do that, then your name will appear on this screen like these people. Uh, thank you to all these people that have done it in the past. And I will see you next time where we talk about enums will be the next video. That will be on Friday. I'm doing Wednesday, Friday, Sunday this week because everything has been a, a bit delayed because it's been a bit hectic. Uh, but I'll see you for that.